Some people dedicate all of their spare time to helping animals that are unloved and have been neglected. Well, there's a chap who lives here, him and his family, John, here in Gloucestershire. They've dedicated loads of their spare time over years trying to resurrect and save these. All types of MG Rovers. A car that's been rare but nobody cares for quite a long time. Well, John and his family do, but the car in question is in that garage there. It's a particularly rare one that John has had for years, years and years and years. And these days he's not in the greatest of health, so we thought we'd come along, we'd get the backstory from John himself, and we'll pull this car out and see if it'll fire up. This is, of course, an 80s turbo barn find edition of The Late Break Show, and I'm Johnny Smith. So Matt, you're the one that contacted us about yes. yeah. John's car. Martin, you're John's son. Yep. John and Liz. So you were, I know you were born into this MG world. Yes. Is it <laughs> you, 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 just off camera, John said, well, you actually came home from hospital when you were born in a nearly new MG Metro. That's right, yeah, 1983 Y-Wedge in a Cinnabar Red. <laughs> <laughs> so you like, you, you were in. Oh yes, yeah, I had no choice with this, did I? <laughs> well, let's have a look at the Montego. We'll carry on chatting. Is it actually open? I think it is. This is the first time in years, so it might be a bit stuck. Oh, here we go. Whoa. Whoa. There we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> on tow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, so there was some stuff wedged up against... Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Right? Yeah, we're all right. Yeah, we're fine. We're all right. Don't worry. Just bits of wood. Uh, yeah, here it is. This is the first time it's seen daylight for a while. Oh my god. Gosh, look at that. See, I always thought they were great looking cars. It's a Southwest registered car. YD. That's right. Yeah, we got it from um, Stumbumba in um, um, yeah. Somerset near the uh, Heritage Railway Station. Yeah, that's near where I was born. This is amazing. There's some good stuff in here. Some great repurposed uh, biscuit tins, I can see. Everything's labelled. We will get all this stuff off it and we'll have a closer look at it. Because um, what did they, 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 they started the MG Turbo in 84? Was it I think it might be 85, but B Reg was the first year of registration. So this is the first year of manufacture? That's right, yep. Wow. Wow, that's great. This was the flagship MG at the time, wasn't it? It was, yeah. This predates the Maestro Turbo. This was the first yep. Turbo MG. Yeah. 150 horsepower, as was. And the best thing about this car is it's got the power when you need it. Well, that was a quick start, Steve. Yes, goes well, doesn't it? Oh, Gets yes. all away from the line like a, as one say, like a bat out of a hill. <laughs> Well, if you want to come and give us a, a hand mat, and yep. we'll, uh, we'll start moving the biscuit tents. There's no V80 or mini cheddars. Yeah. So that's something I've learned today. Oh yeah, I'll get the tray. Tigo body colour mirror. Yeah, same But yeah, this is turbo specific because it's got extra fuses for all the turbo cooling fans, which the, the regular Montegos won't have. That's right, the carb fan. That's the one, yeah. There's an ECU in here. Oh, that's got ECUs everywhere. It's a nice wheel, I love a cross lace. 80s alloy. Oh, it looks great in there. Of course, of course. So tell me about why there's a rear screen resting on the where the screen should be. Well, story with that is if you look up into the, the roof trusses, there was a row of wheels here. They were up there for a good few years and one of them sadly deflated and ended up getting narrower, and went straight through the rear uh, screen. It fell through. So um, luckily a very, um, um, nice uh, local banger racer, carefully cut out this screen off the Montego he raced and um, donated to us. That is cool. 
So you've got that to put in. The wheels are not original. No, I'd they're say. off a, um, an MGF um, VVC from about 1995, 96. Yeah, but, they look more 90s than 80s. But that's a popular swap just because the original wheels are um, a metric, which you can't get the tires for anymore. Of course. Yeah, with right, of course. And they're a nightmare to buy tires for. And the rubber, the rubber boot spoiler, look. That's it, yeah, non-color coded because it's an early car. Brilliant. There's still stuff, every inch of this garage has got Yeah, stashed. we've got another spare Montego doors, headlinings. Oh, that is a headlining, I hadn't, yeah. Yeah. I think there's a turbo carb, an inch cooler there, which is, a, it's the same as a Renault 5 turbo one, but an inch longer. And then, um, yeah, boost pipes, just more Montego spares. Every, honestly, everywhere I'm looking is Austin Rover. There's oh, a yeah. whole, hang on, there's a whole handful of turbos down here. Yeah, Each some one. of those are, some of them are K-series ones. There we go, Z, yeah, ZTT, 18T. John, thanks for inviting me along today. You're most welcome, Johnny. <laughs> now, I was going to ask you, how on earth did this whole MG interest slash obsession begin? I was 12 when they, actually the seeds were sown of a lifelong interest in the mark. A neighbour who was a car dealer and had a showroom in the city, his personal transport was an MG Magnet Z1, which he'd had stage two or stage three tuned. Okay. It was rapid. It would be rapid by today's standards. Yeah. Anyway, every now and again, he'd attend the Chooks Free car sales. And he grabbed my dad and me and take us to Chooks Free in the event that he bought a car, someone would be needed to drive it back. Yeah. There was no M5 motorway in, that, in those days. It was just the A38. And he drove that car up and down there like a dose of salt. <laughs> How could I not be impressed? <laughs> <laughs> so that was that was your sort of first MG experience. Yeah. And how many MG? Because we've got we've had up, we've just moved a whole cluster off the drive. I've seen uh, you said off camera that that Burgundy ZTT you got for like seventy quid a decade Correct. ago. Yeah. For pretty much the price of scrap. Yeah. I've got a a wide range of it enthusiast friends who are always in touch. You know. So, it's a nice family, the MV and Rover people. I got a call from him one day on the phone and he said, John, um, I've been off, I've, got, I've had a cylinder head taken off on my uh, MG ZTT. I've been quoted four figures to put it right, but I need a new, I need another car tomorrow to get to work. I've been offered £37.50 to take <laughs> it away. That was at a time when scrap values were down here, you yeah, know. Yeah. He said, do you want to come and get it? And I said, yeah. I said, I'll do it. Not only will I do that, I'll double that to 75 quid. <laughs> How bizarre. And the blue car that we just moved, the ZS, your wife Lynn has had that from you? Yeah. It, it, it's now in its 21st year of reliable ownership. It's been written off by the uh, insurance companies twice, having been rear-ended by inattentive drivers. <laughs> And on, both, said it. and on both occasions, I argued with the guilty third parties insurance company. Yeah. I used to be in motor insurance, by the way. Did you? A long, so I know how they operate. I had that ZS written off for a two inch crack in the rear bumper. What? Yes. I was there when their approved assessor checked the car for damage and structural and all that. So you wanted to um, write it off. So you fought it and, and you, uh, I yeah, you and saved uh, it. Yeah. You've had seven odd Montego turbos. The one in here, what's made you keep this one? You've had this one for a long it time. It was the earliest. Yeah. It was a Mark I, not facelifted, and it had been well looked at. It was the best of several good ones. They were, they were a far, for their time, they were a fast car. I think it is true, the, the message that it was the fastest accelerating four-door saloon in the world at the time. Yeah, I've also been told that this is the fastest ever production car in the history of MG with a top speed of, what, 126 miles an hour? Yes, that's right. 
So the car came off the road in 2005 when it failed its MOT on the backs of the, basically the backs of the sills, corrosion. Well known for Montego's. But you, your dad can't remember when he bought it. He thinks it's about 2003. Okay. <laughs> Right, we've, we've put a bit of air into all the tyres. We don't know if the brakes are seized, hopefully they're not. And the handbrake was left off, so that's good. We'll see if we can get it out there onto the drive for a, for a closer look. I've got a block in my hand in case it runs away with us and goes into the neighbour's fence. Which it won't. It won't. Yeah. There you go, John. Doesn't look bad, does it? Doesn't look bad at all. I can't remember the last time I saw a Montego with arches that were intact, actually. <laughs> it's quite a long time ago. I actually can't believe how solid it is. Yeah, it is really solid. I can't believe you've moved it. <laughs> yeah, it moves, it moves. I opened the door and I immediately saw the sort of velvet lined coin tray and that, that key, which just takes me straight back to my childhood. Yeah, typical BLK. That Austin Rover wobbly key. A first for Austin Rover is the special presentation pack, comprising a top quality Swiss watch or a lady's briefcase in burgundy leather, a gift for the owner's partner, two MG turbo fobs, and a cleaning cloth. This interior, what is this? It's not drail on, it's velour, isn't it? It's in really good nick. Because yeah, this stuff doesn't wear brilliantly well from memory, but it's been out of the UV light. Yeah, so it hasn't faded and the red piping's still there it's and the, really the herringbone is still visible. And of course the red belts. Red belts. Yeah. Which are on the, uh, the early MG Montegos. And I've noticed the, you've got Montego mats, rubber mats, apart from the driver's one, but underneath... Oh, it's the MG logo. You've yep. still got the heel pad. The carpets are really good. So although I noticed in the back there's a little bit of sign of mice Yeah, action. mouse has obviously got in here, which is... Uh, Unfortunate. But they've only done a tiny bit of damage, yeah. tiny, tiny. There's a bit of mouse plop on them. Oh, no. So that gear knob is not... No, that's an MGZR one. Because he's fitted a, a, a quick shift whole gear lever off an MGZR. So, oh. oh, okay. So we have to retrofit the Montego one back on there because the, annoyingly the gear knob thread is a different size. Is it really? There's an MG rubber dash top on top of another MG rubber uh, dash top. Perfect place to store it's it. It's just like there are, you, you've got enough parts to rebuild this car in, in the privacy of your own garage without ever leaving. It's amazing. It's a really nice time warp car. Yeah, do it on the, uh, on the boot release. Let's see if we can get it to release. Oh, it still yeah. works. Straight away. Straight away. So what have I got in there? Break. Oh my. What have you Can't got in here, John? You've got... A lot in here. That's all Rover 620 <laughs> Ti parts. So at least two inlet manifolds. <coughs> oh, we've got more spare carburettors. Wow, are they all tur turbo carburettors? Yep, yeah, it's turbo. Seriously? You guys, there's, that, there's a whole little shelf full over there. No, yeah, that turbo. last one of those I sold, 200 quid. Really? They go more than that now. Well, Do they? you've probably got a thousand worth, a thousand quid's worth of carburettors. You could easily, that'll go a long way recommissioning this bad Yeah, boy. we'll sell them and yeah. put the money towards the car. So you were telling me off camera, Martin, oh, I, another yeah. geek fact, which I love about Montegos, that you have a have later rear light clusters. Yeah, the this. later ones These are smooth are the off the ones, off the yeah. Rover Montego. I prefer to clean. Yeah, so but the smooth. other ones look like the early Mercedes with steps. Well, they're they're ribbed. They're yeah. ribbed. 
But I've got I've got sets with them. You've got multiple sets, so you can put it back. Yes, we're gonna, I think we're going to just for the retro ness. We're going to yeah. put them back on. Yeah. It's always a real privilege to get to work on cars like this. This thing's been squirreled away, and I think being dry stored in the way it has has, has totally helped preserve it. I can't remember the last time I saw a Montego with such solid underneath. I've had a quick crawl around it. It's really good. You could probably put this car back on the road in a weekend, but I've just had a, a couple of messages from my podcast mate, Rich Porter. I do a podcast, in case you didn't know, every Monday called Smith and & Sniff. And he said, there's 48 of these sawned. So there are, there are as many Montego turbos on our roads as there are Lamborghini Diablo SVs. <laughs> you're, you're probably more likely to see a Lambo Diablo. So first thing we're gonna do, as usual, I think we're gonna whip the plugs out, squirt a little bit of lube down, down the, the spark plug holes, clean the plugs, take off the, um, the feed for the, um, the fuel. This is the SU carb, they had a carburetor that went into, the, and then the Garrett T3 turbo. The turbo's hidden all the way down the back, can't really see it. And then we can go to turn the engine over with the plugs out with no compression. And once we've ascertained that that's okay and safe, we can probably, and we've got a spark, we will then introduce the fuel with the can of hope. Plugs look in really good condition. In fact, they barely need a clean, which bodes well. If you're wondering why I haven't put the BFF on today, the barn fine fleece, it's because it's still really hot. I'm not mad. I think I'm getting a bit of a, a bit of a tan on the dome. The BFF is is out of the question today. So Martin's just going to turn the engine over on a bar. There you go. Right. Do you want to go for a, a turnover with none of the plugs in? Yeah. Yep. Just see if we get some. All right. Yeah. All right, it's not in gear. Ignition on. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Pressure nice bit the of... light went out, I think. If we do it one more time, I'm just going to see if I can get a spark from... Okay. Yeah, when would you like me to turn over? Yeah. <laughs> okay. No spark. No spark. No spark, so I'll take the cap off and uh, I'll put all the plugs back in. Yeah. And then um, we'll can have a look at the... Well, that's a good sign, it spins. We took the distributor cap off, which is a bit of a faff underneath the turbo hoses. According to John and Martin, the early Montego turbos like this have a one-piece pipe like so. The, the, laid, the Maestro turbo I worked on, which was later got... That's right. I've actually got a set of they, they, ones. They split oh, there. The yeah, yeah, it just, it just makes it more of a yeah. faff to get to the distributor because it sits underneath all of this. So I've had to remove the air box and kind of crawl in. Uh, the original um, dizzy cap is, is awfully corroded inside. So we've actually, because John's got loads of spares, we found a nice nearly new one and that's what we're going to put on. So, oh, getting very sweaty. You might not know this, but Late Break Show does merch. We have a merch shop. I'll put a link on the, the, the screen here. We sell all kinds of things, many of which are practical and, and good quality. Loads, loads of stuff. Mm. That water tastes better because it's in a Late Break Show container. <laughs> Yeah, we have a spark. So that battery's sounding a bit weak. I'll put the jump pack on it. Yeah. And then I'll put that plug back in. And I think so we'll introduce some fuel. You ready? 
Yeah. Yep. Okay. Right, let's go. Try. Yeah. <laughs> Oh! <laughs> she runs. <laughs> That's the first time, is it? That's the first time it's fired. It's tried to fire. Did you yeah. film that? Oh, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> so it right. runs anyway. We know Let's that. See. So I would give it a pump, give it a couple of pumps of the throttle before you turn it over. Yep. Yeah. I did last time as well. Good. Let's just see what happens now. Right. Start. Yep. Yeah. Ready. Again? Yep. That mm. squeak, is that a belt? Sounds like the auto think... belt. Oh, try, try, yeah. wonder if it's seized. Maybe. Something's squealing, so something's slipping. There's the alternator. Right, shall I turn it over? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, solid. The, What's yeah, the seized? Whole, the, the power steering? The, the whole pulley system's not moving a damn. Yeah. Well, we don't need power steering, so we just saw that off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what. I, yeah, I, I did that on last save week's barn. I don't want to take the pulley off. We haven't got time. Saw it off. It's scrap anyway. It is. You need to replace yeah. belts anyway. So we got. Where's the junior hacksaw, Dad? I've got a. Hang on. I've got a. I've got a, a craft knife. When I first started, there we my, go. My metro. It, <laughs> the belt just sheared off anyway. That's the thing. It is a consumable item. Yeah. So. Well, it's twenty-year-old bit of rubber, ain't. Okay. Right. <laughs> Idle? Will it idle at all? No. That's more like its old self. Well, we have lift off. There we go. Yeah, sorted. I mean, I basically ran it on a syringe. Yeah. So what we need to do is check out the uh, fuel pump. But we, what's the fuel gauge reading, Martin? <laughs> Empty. <laughs> Empty. Oh, well, there you <laughs> the go. Lights on but there's every chance you could you could half half fill the tank with fresh fuel, connect it all up, tap the uh, the Bosch fuel pump, and yep, away it goes. Or clean the connections, yeah. and she'll be alive. But for the purpose of this, you've got, this, a, you've got a spare like one. one. What? You've got a spare one there anyway. Eagle-eyed viewers might have noticed in the background of the other garage, not where well, the Montego garage is. There is this a Rover Metro. What is it? I know it's a Metro. Don't say that. So you've obviously done some stuff to it. Yeah. So and, it, and you said it was a one lady owner car. Yeah, it's been in the family since new. So it's a, another project we've got. So it was a, yeah, a 1993 K Reg, a 1.1 um, four speed carburetor, but it's now uh, got the 1.8 VVC in. So hopefully we'll get it on the road one day once it's all finished off. Let's but, just have a quick look at the engine. Yeah, it's, it's work in progress. Wow. So this thing must fly. Yeah, it was, it is quick. Well, how many horsepower is that? Um, it's 143, but I did have it rolling roaded. It's a, a few little mods like the exhaust and the air filter, and it was 155 horsepower. Was it really? But these things weigh nothing. Yeah, it's about 800 kilos, so power to weight ratio is yeah, pretty good. That is brilliant. And a really solid low mileage car. Yes, yeah. Well, I think it's actually, I got it on 20,000, and yeah, it's a bit more mileage. 20,000? 20, yeah, but it's, uh, I think it's uh, around 80 now. Wow. That, that's that's a win, isn't it? Yeah, yeah definitely. definitely. Thanks very much for helping get reckon, it running, Johnny. It's giant, yeah. It's good, isn't it? Nice day for uh, for an MG Montego to fire up for the first time in years. But uh, yeah, I think we proved that it that it runs okay. I think it's it settled down to a reasonable um, it, idle it, eventually. Yeah, it did, yeah, didn't it? Running on the syringe, actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, but of course, you've got enough spares to rebuild the whole fuel system. Or the other one may may work in the way that you suggested. Yeah. Sometimes it's just cleaning the contacts. Yeah, yeah. Obviously all the flexies need replacing anyway. Yeah. But I hope 
It's always nice to end a barn farm with a running car. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So I want to say thank you very much to you guys for letting me come along and having a look at the Montego. It's been great. Haven't seen one in so long. It's been a real nice experience and I thank you both. Yeah, I really oh, appreciate yeah. it. It's been a pleasure. Thank yeah. you. That's all right. Now, if you have a car that you know of that could be of interest for me to come and see, it might be in a garage, it might be in a real barn, it might be on a drive in a hedge, something else, I don't know, I can't think of another location. Let me know, there's a, an email in the description. Email me, give me your location, give me some photos and some details of the story, that'd be wonderful. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, you're a fool. You really ought to. <laughs>